There's a set of morals in here that we no longer abide by. So I'm going to read something to you because I don't know who here has heard this. And I'm going to go through this very briefly and then I'm going to jump right in the middle of this here and I'm going to tell you where the danger is coming from. So if you can bear with me while I get my 20-year-old eyes working here, it would be good. Okay? I'm going to read the Declaration of Independence. Has anybody ever heard that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Several of you have heard it. We're going to hear it again. But you're going to get in a, you're, but you're going to get a command sergeant major's a, 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 a abbreviated reading. It says, we, we, ladies and gentlemen, mean us, the American people, not some bumbleheads in Washington, D.C. It's us, not them. You're going to find out why I'm a drill sergeant, too. <laughs> I actually sing four and five hundred people. I know I got some former Marines in here because I fought them. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. That does not mean affirmative action. That means we're all equal. And then we work through life to become unequal. Some of us get to be lawyers. So far about that. Like a car salesman, maybe. I don't know. But we're all equal. God does not respect persons. So we have no business passing hate crime laws. None. Because we're setting aside a group of people special. We've got a Supreme Court out of control with the laws on sodomy, and that's what they are. The word gay just means happy. It does not mean wrong. Ooh, drill sergeant coming out of me. <laughs> all created that all are endowed by their creator, that would be Jesus Christ, with certain unalienable rights. What God gives you, ladies and gentlemen, only God can take back. I'm going to get into the definitions of law in just a second. Where am I at? Inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, that be us, derived from the just powers, from the consent of the government. That means us. We give them the consent to rule over us. They don't take it. We need to drop some, kick some of them. And you might see my killer instinct come out here and certainly, so hold me off here. <laughs> it tends to come out of me when I get talking about this. Uh, where am I at? Consent of the government. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. That means we can get rid of it. And you're not an extremist by doing it. You have the right. You take the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution is a Christian document. And I'm going I'm to read, where am I at? Where is it at? Where, where is it at? <laughs> Somebody done stole the most lethalist weapon in the world. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going to read something to you. That's the only verse I'm going to read out here, because I don't know who all is here. Okay? But this here is the foundation for this. You can't separate them. I, I don't know what them black robe perverts don't understand down there. But they need me to talk to them. I'll square them away for you. It'll take me about a minute. Yeah. And to institute new government lying its foundations on such principles and organizations, powers in such form as to them shall seem likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will, will dictate that government long established should not be changed for light and transient calls. And accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and absurdions pursuing inverted the same objective invents a design to re reduce them under absolute despot, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government. This is from, this is from the founding of our country. This is our birth certificate. And we're letting it slip right through our fingers because a lot of pastors don't have the testosterone to throw it at you in your face. Yeah, right. yeah. There was a time in this country when pastors wore a military suit underneath of their robe. They were called Minutemen. They were the first ones on the battleground. What has happened to us, ladies and gentlemen? Where has it gone? It takes one generation. That's 50 years about to destroy a nation. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. 
We are in very, very deep trouble. Very deep trouble. I want to talk about who's the commander-in-chief of the military. It's not the President of the United States. He is not the commander-in-chief until war has been declared. War has never been declared since World War II. And I have had nine combat tours. And each one of them has cost me 18 months of my life. I've done my fair share of killing. I'm tired of it. And you're either going to go to the ballot box or you're going to go to the bullet box in the next 18 months. If you got that time. I'm dead serious. I'm a former Green Beret. I know exactly what I'm talking about. This ain't no game, folks. And I'm going to read to you in just a second. The President shall be Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy. Notice it doesn't talk about the Marines and the Air Force. There's a reason for that. Of the United States and the militia of the several, several states. When, come, when called into actual service. So if they're not in service, who's he commanding? If they're not in war, who's he commanding? I'm going to tell you. Glad you asked that question. Okay. Where am I at here? I'm going to skip that one. I don't want to hear that anyway. Okay. Let's see. Section 4. The United States shall guarantee to every state in the Union a Republican form of government. Do you know what the definition of a nation is under international law? Anybody have any idea what that is? I'm glad you told me because I'm going to tell you. Number one is they have a sovereign flag. Does Missouri not have a flag? Yes. Okay. You have the second thing. A sovereign nation must be able to prosecute a country for a treaty. Now, I know some of you know what this is because I see you in here. I know who you are. Okay. must be able to prosecute a white Treason. Missouri has a state law for treason. How many, how many other nations do you see doing this? Nobody. So you have a national flag. Missouri has a flag. You must be under international law, have the ability to try a person for treason. If you go to Russia, only Russia can try, try, try you for treason. If you go to China, only China can, can try you for treason. So why can't all 50 states try you for treason if they're not considered sovereign? That makes sense? That's right. So we have that. The second thing you have is you have to have a, a commonly dressed military with a bona fide uniform. You can't have a bunch of ragtags walking around with a bunch of different uniforms on. So if you're all going down that road, you're going down the wrong way. You need a common uniform. Missouri has that. It's not the National Guard, by the way. They lost that in 1940 when they accepted federal funds. Right. There's two kinds of militia, the called out and the non-called out. And two people can call the militia out, if I understand it right, the governor or the sheriff of the, of the county. Two most powerful positions there is. But the National Guard does wear the big bear. So that is their uniform. So they claim they are the militia. No, they are not. They haven't been the militia. That's why it's called national. The militia is made up of every body, male, body man, 18 to 65, in a county. It ain't them people over in Washington, D.C. It's here. Now, I can never be part of it because I'm a federal troop. I'm retired federal service. I cannot join a militia unit. But I can advise. I can do that. Okay? So those are the things that make up a nation. So Missouri has its own flag. It can try you for treason. It has a common military. And, and they can try you under a uniform code of military justice within the militia. So it's very valid. So we are a sovereign nation according to our founding fathers. And under the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, you, uh, the, the, the Ninth Amendment, you have sovereign rights from the state as an individual. You have a right to marry who you want. You have a right to live where you want. You have a right to train for what you want. You have a right to do those things. The Tenth Amendment means the states are sovereign from the federal government. The federal government has no business coming in there telling us what to do. Unless it specifically is given to them by this. I just read it to you. If it's not in here, they can't do it. They have no right sending our, 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 our young, uh, young sons all over the world. Because he's, he's not the commander in chief. Congress commands the military. Congress does it. Not the president because there's no declared war. Because I, I have fought everything from Vietnam till now. I've been through all of them. Every single one of them. 
And there's not a one of them that declared war. Why are you not upset about that? Why is people not jumping up and down about that? Blaine Lukenmeyer out there where I live is an absolute idiot. Roy Blunt and Claire McCaskill won't even talk to me. They say, you're an extremist. I say, amen. Okay? And I'm real good with a rifle. My best shot is 1,875 meters. I got me a gold star on that one. That's a fact. You run for me, you will die tired. I'm dead serious, folks. When are we going to get back to this? Back to our birth certificate. Speaking of birth certificate, this is a pet peeve of mine. I got a friend over here I've known for years. This is really a pet peeve. I'm not going to dime you out, James. On my birth certificate, it says, uh, my father's name, John William Page, our address, and my mother's name, Gladys Marie Page, address. Then it has my name. And down here it says, Caucasian male. Uh, I went down and got me a new birth certificate because somebody wanted the police department. I was a white male. I said, whoa, wait a minute. I, this evolution must be true. <laughs> How did I become a white male from a Caucasian male? There's a reason for that if you understand psychological warfare. It's taken away your humanity, which makes the, the, the soldier who's going to kill you feel much easier. Now, I know this is really, I can't get too deep into it because I don't have the time. Right. But the first thing they do when they want to kill you is they start changing who you are. They take away your identity. A horse is the same as a pony. A girl is the same as a woman. We know that's all bull. It's not true. So I'm sitting there looking at that. Wait a minute. I got two birth certificates here. One says Caucasian, one says what? She says, well, they mean the same. I said, well, then why did you change it? Right. Come on, muttonhead, tell me. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Where am I? I'm getting wound up here. Now. Hold on. I've done talking about the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, so I'm not going to dwell on that. But I do want to read some scripture to you where we get Madison, who was the principal architect of the, uh, of the, uh, dec of, uh, of the Constitution. In Isaiah chapter, I believe, let me get to it here, 33, verse 22, if you have a Bible. Isaiah 33, 22. Don't worry, I'm not going to preach to you. I'm not a preacher. Isaiah 33, 22, I believe. I've carried this little Bible with me wherever I go. They used to issue these to you, but they no longer do that. Incidentally, when Mr. Reagan became president, he issued us, he issued these to everybody. And as soon as George Bush the first got in, he took them all back. Okay? But uh, let me get to Isaiah. Somebody beats me there. Would you read it, whoever gets there first? Isaiah 33, or I got it, I think. 33:22. Now listen to what he says, and and you can you can take Madison's writings, and you can you can refer to this. This is not my opinion. This is fact. Okay, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22. Now listen to what it says: For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. Three branches of government. That's a fact. Madison refers to this. And by the way, Jefferson had nothing to do with the U.S. Constitution. He was in France. He wasn't even in America. He wrote the Declaration of Independence, period. Madison was a principal architect of our birth certificate. <coughs> the problem we got is people do not understand what's on their birth certificate. Yep. And we're about to lose it. We are very, very close to losing it. Does everybody understand where it's? Isaiah 33, 22. For the Lord is our judge, that's the, that is the judiciary, the Lord is our lawgiver. That's Congress. The Lord is our king. That's the president. That's not my, that's not my imagination. I want to pass out to make sure I get these back. There may be, there may be a cop in here who's got sticky fingers or something. Uh, this is the proposed new constitution that has already been drafted. It was ordered under George Bush. Can I get somebody else to? Uh, yeah, Carol, could you pass it around for me? I, I need those back. That, has already, that is only one draft of eight drafts that are going on right now. They started under, just take a quick look at it, because I'm going to put it up here if I can get to it. That's only one draft of many drafts. The new Constitution is all ready to go. They only need the right incident to bring it down, and they're working on that right now. We're not very far away from an event 
that's going to bring what you call martial law. That, that term will never be used, by the way. Yep. Emergency police powers will be. Just take a quick look at it. Now, you can go to the, please do not hang on to it. Pass it. I'll come by and take it out of your hand if I see you holding it too long. I will do it. I got in an argument with a man when he started, he started going through it page by page. And I said, hey, Huckleberry, move it on. He wouldn't do it, so I took it out of his hand. So I will do it. Pass it on, because I'm going to put it up here. By the way, I'm not known for my personality, so I don't mean to offend nobody. <laughs> can we just look that thing up on Google? Yes, you can. You, you can get it yourself. Did anybody read the USA Today? Well, this little homosexual sodomite here. Just to call, <coughs> incidentally, there are four sodomites on the Supreme Court. Yeah. Has anybody yeah. read this? Farmer Justice Stevens wants to change the Constitution, and he lists the six things in here that have to go. Number one, the Second Amendment. Why would he pick that one up? Because he's an idiot. No, he's not an idiot. Man knows what he's doing. You can read this yourself right there. You can read it yourself. It's in today's. You. This is today. I have a liturgy of this stuff to put to you as fast as I can. We are in great, great peril. It says, change the Second Amendment. Yeah. Change the Eighth Amendment. You know what the Eighth Amendment's for? Yeah. Hope you all do. If you don't, you're going to find out. Removing the First Amendment clause about, about religious freedom. Who do you think they're targeting on that? Christians. Okay. Even if you're not a Christian, this ought to concern you. It ought, it ought to really get you upset. Uh, the states must become submissive to the federal government in all aspects. Bro. By the way that we're being run, I would say that's probably already done. Uh, allow Congress to, to states to perform federal uh, duties in emergencies. In other words, they want to be able to send everybody anywhere they want. Anywhere they want. Uh, if you can give me just a moment, I'm going to get into this something else here now because I want to throw some of this up on the board. But in the meantime, I'm going to do this. So if you, I think I'm already going already. Get into this. I want to show you something here. I'm kind of a one, one man army here. You're not going to see this slide anywhere in the world. What I would like for you to do is to, I'm going to pass these two around. Not steal them, it's all I got. I will break your arms. Okay. This is a secretary of the army in my last few months in Africa. Okay. Secretary Hillary Clinton was there. Okay. This is what the world's going to start to look like by 2015. How far is that away? It's not very far, is it? That means you better get prepared, folks. That's the only slide in the world like that. You won't find it nowhere in the world. I snapped that with a little camera. I was in that office that you see, that's the Secretary of the Army. He said in 2015 events are going to start happening. That's going to transform us into this. Now you've seen the Constitution. I'm not blowing smoke up your backside, folks, because you ain't got nothing I want. And I'm not afraid of a man in here. You don't intimidate me. So I'm not, that's true stuff. This is going to happen. It cannot be stopped. It's not going to stop until you get in touch with your state legislators and get up in their backside. You've got to start teaching your children. You need to get that five and six year old and teach them their birth certificate and you need to start pounding it into them. You've got to make your man up. You've got to make your mind up to man up or get out. Lead, follow, or move. This is serious business. There's going to be a lot of blood, folks. Because you're looking at one 60 year old man ain't going to go along with it. Been there, done that. If I die, I go to heaven. What are they going to do, kill me? Amen. Hell, I died a long time ago. Could, could you just say one more time, what does this represent? This represents that the world's been broken down into ten regions. Oh. I'm glad you brought The world has been broken down into ten regions. This is one of the models, just one. It's probably going to change between now and 2020. By 2020, this will be in effect. <coughs> The United States has been subdivided into 10 regions. Everything is 10. Everything is 10. Okay? Iowa, Iowa, Nebraska, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri are zone 7. 
the boundaries and the county boundaries have been erased. That's why you see all these joint task force on police. They don't, the policemen don't know this. And when I talk to them, they say, okay, Paige, yep. you got P like PMS or some crap, I don't know, whatever they call that. <laughs> Dan, are these the same as the FEMA regions? I don't know about that, uh, sir. I just yeah. know what, what, what I know on here. No, not, I mean uh, the, the, the regions of the states. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I've, I've never seen that, so I, I, I can't say. But I do know that the United States has been broken down into 10 sub regions. Missouri, Iowa, Kansas is zone 7. The counties are being erased. Police departments are becoming one. Yeah. Everything has to become one. And it's going to happen. If, have you noticed the school district problems in, in St. Louis County? Have you noticed that Her, uh, Harris, I mean, uh, uh, Normandy School District and all that are all in serious trouble? And do you, I forgot to bring this to you. I, I apologize to you. It's a book by Al, Al Solzhenitsyn. Anybody know who he is? Right. Al, yeah. Right. He wrote a book called The Gulag Archipelago. Right. You familiar with that? In there, he lays out a plan. And what he said was, you have to build educational barracks to get the kids to go to so they can have diversity. You are about to see a proposal, probably in the next four or five years, where they are going to build barracks, educational, cam educational campgrounds for kids, and everybody's going to turn it over to them. And then, and then what starts happening, he just talks about how they would let the kids come home a one week, one week in the month, then, then they kept it to a one, one week in the month, then they expanded it to every six months, and then once a year. Yep. And then what the kids started doing was spying on the parents. Yep. And guess what happened to the parents? They went to the gulag. You know where the gulag was at? It was in Siberia. That's where you all gonna go. If you don't, start talking to your children. Get away from the stupid TV and the ball games. The house is burning down. You don't have time, ladies and gentlemen. 2015, everything up to this is coming down. It's falling down all around you. But yet grown men will stand for hours and spend hundreds of dollars on grown men playing a child's game. I guess they like looking at men in tight pants. I don't know. You know, I don't know what the problem is. I really don't get it. The average football uh, ticket last year cost $247 per person. This year they said that this, this, this game, Super Bowl game, was the most expensive in world history and people went bankrupt to go see it. How stupid can you get? Should you not be a good steward of what you've been given? The day is going to come when grown men are going to cry and wish they were never born because they didn't spend time with their, with their daughters. They didn't spend time with their sons, but they stayed some stupid game down in Bush Stadium. Doesn't make sense. So that's right there. That's where we're going. Let me see if I can get out of there. Out of this one here, I want to show you another one. The man you're looking here is Rear Admiral Losey. Okay? I'm going to show you some slides in just a second of something that's going to greatly affect you. He is the chief seal of all U.S. seals. Okay? He's a very good man, but he's hard as nails. He's smiling there, but he never smiled at me. He was always telling me to do something. So I'm gonna sit down here just for a second, try to operate this, so we can get through this thing real quick. Okay, then I'm gonna put it on, put it on go. Now this here is Command Master Chief Robert Audis. He is my grade. He is a Navy E9. Him and I was the highest ranking people on on the whole African continent. I was a Command Sergeant Major for Africom. He was a command. He was a Command Master Chief of all naval forces. He worked for Admiral Losey, and I worked for Admiral Losey. He had, he had control of all the SEALs. I had control of all the Rangers and Green Berets, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Very good man, hard man. And he told me on this trip that you're seeing right here, he says, I'm going to retire and I get back. I'm not going to be part of this. I'm not going to be part. And then I'm going to tell you about 9-11, what really happened to the World Trade Towers. Okay? A lot of things you all don't know about. This here is the Chinese, it's a Chinese mobile, mobile concrete fracture. We built the road from, if you know your, if you know eschatology, and I hope that you do, anybody ever Psalms 83? Anybody familiar with that? 
You know, Armageddon? Armageddon is not one battle. Armageddon is three battles. Armageddon is a war, but there's three battles. In Psalms 83, Russia invades Israel. They are beat back. Eight-fifths of their army are killed. They go all the way back to Siberia. Is that right? Know your Bible? Amen. Okay? The second battle is with the king of the east. That'd be China. They come down with 200,000 arms. That 200,000 cells. That's 200 million. They're the only people right now on earth that can feel that. Something you may not know about is all the wild horses in American West for the past 10 years have been shipped over there. This, this road that I'm going to show you starts in China and ends at the mouth of the Euphrates River in, in Iraq. Do you know what this means? Are you, are you seeing where I'm going with this? MRS. Pardon? Do what? It's an MRS. No it's, no, it's not MRS. Are you, do you understand the significance of this? No. That's where the army is going to come from that's going to invade Israel mm -hmm. for the second battle. The final battle is when the Lord himself comes back and kills everybody. Okay? That's how close to this is. And I'm going to put this on here in just a second, but I'm going to show you a couple more things. Okay? This is the SEAL S. South, this is the South Korean SEAL team captain, commander. Okay? This is the ship that I was on. I actually looked pretty good there. <laughs> Been a little gray there. That's just tread mileage. <laughs> now this here is Kenya. I had my own airplane. I had me a Learjet. I said, I want to go find where that Ill Ill illegal alien is to be my president, my undocumented president lives at. So I flew to Africa and right there and I went to our undocumented president's home. He was born in Kenya. Okay? I'm going to show that to you. This is not my opinion. That's just a little poster. It says Kenya right there, right there. See? Incidentally, Army Green Berets are the only ones authorized to wear civilian clothes in combat. We can kill you any way we want. Up close, kiss you, whatever we want. Green Berets are the only ones trained in unconventional warfare and counterinsurgency. SEALs are not, Marines are not, we are. We are the premier military force. Period. <coughs> well, this is, this is me again. Baldy, this guy here, I liked him. If I was to ask you this question, don't answer it. Who, who would you want to be murdered by? or who, who would you want to be killed by? Somebody frowning or somebody smiling? <laughs> he always smiled. <laughs> I, said, I said, man, why are you smiling? I like my work. <laughs> he, he was the chief seal for the South Korean Army. That man could kick you in the head, and then cut your head off and smile at you. And he'd sit down and eat spaghetti afterwards. I'm dead serious. That, that man would kill you and smile at you. A little background here. This here, is the, this here is the ship I served on. That'd be me right there. Okay. Are you saying they're mixing all the armies? They're bringing in the Russians and the Chinese? Yes, Germans they are. To yep. kill us. Yes, they are. This here was, was our CIA base. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see here. If you notice that name, right here, what's it say? Obama. Yeah, that, well, they forgot to spell the B right. It's Obama. <laughs> see? Obama went to school here. I'm going to show you this. This is the school right here. Yep. Actually, I'm African. I, I'm, I'm just real well. I'm just, I'm, I've, I've been in a cave for a couple of weeks. I got real light complexion. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm going to put this on slide projection here and then I'm going to get into something else. I'll let you look at that for a few minutes. Let me see. Where's my note bag? Just kind of look at that while I'm talking to you about some things. Right now, there are three phases that a society goes through. One is, is, uh, is persecution. That means your faith is being challenged. Everybody mocks you. Everybody ridicules you. They stand for nothing. If you take a stand against sodomy, abortion, you are a terrorist, ladies and gentlemen. 
The next phase is prosecution. There's a couple out there in New Mexico right now that are being prosecuted and put out of business and were arrested because they refused to take pictures of sodomites. What, what, what about my freedom of religion from that? In the, in the military right now, you have open sodomy, people holding hands, swapping spit together, sick. It's pitiful. You've got women trying to be, by the way, and I deeply resent this, we had our first female Green Beret. Of course, they had to redo the qualifications. We've had our first Marine infantry officer come out. Of course, they had to redo the qualifications. What's, what's wrong here? We have our first female Ranger. What happened here? Something's wrong. So we, the next phase after you have, pro, you, have pro, you have persecution, prosecution, the final phase is execution. In the scriptures, does it not teach you about the four horsemen of the apocalypse? You have a white horse and a pale horse. The pale horse is actually burrow green. Do you know what the color of Islam is? Green. Does it not say whoever refuses to take the mark will be beheaded? Is that not true? Do you know how the Muslims take care of you? They cut your head off. Obama is allowing hundreds of thousands of them to come in every week. Yep. The only passive Muslim is a Sufi. Sufi only. They are passive until they get around a more dominant Muslim. Then they will kill you. Muslims are passive until they gain parity with you or they exceed you in numbers. And they will kill you. Yep. Just some thoughts here for you. With, with, with relation to the Constitution, there are three views of law. There is the law of nature. Two men cannot make a baby. It takes a man and a woman, the law of nature. Okay? What goes up must come down. That's nature. Then there is called the natural law. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't remember anything else tonight, please remember these things. The law, the natural law comes from God. Whatever God gives you, only God can take back. Under God, God's law never changed. His word has never changed. But out of his mercy, he will extend your life or whatever. He just extended your grace to you. But if he decides to slam you down, you're done. Now what you're seeing there is that road being built. You need to study your Bible to see how, what that means to you. That's Because this is close. That thing was completed May, May the 10th of last year. It's done. It's got two foot of asphalt and a foot of concrete underneath of it. Now, why would they need such a heavy road? Heavy equipment. Heavy equipment. It can only be used for commercial and military <coughs> use. There's nobody living on that. Nobody. The power lines that you see there don't have no juice in them until the Chinese throw the switch. I want to go back to this. But the law of nature says you, you are, as, as God is sovereign... And the, and the world is sovereign. You are a sovereign individual. And out of that comes the republic. The word republic means a body of law. God's attribute is law because he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and a million years from now, God ain't going to change. He says that's wrong, it stays wrong. He doesn't change. That's, what the law, that's where the law of republic comes from. And under, the, under a republican form of government, you have constitutional law. That be this. And it cannot be changed unless you go through an amendment process. That's the only way to change it. The amendment process equates to God's mercy. Okay? That's how you do it. Under positivism, which is the third, is a communist doctrine of law. Positivism says the, the state is the highest form of authority. And whatever the state gives, the state can take away. Okay? And under positivism, you have something called civil rights. Have you heard that before? <clears throat> There's a difference between constitutional rights and civil rights. Under positivism, the law changes with each new generation. While trying to define a generation may be a bit pro problematic. Some say 20 years, some say 50, some say 100. So can you see the confusion in our country today? It's a mess. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. During the American Revolution, or prior to that, there was an incident, I think it was in Boston, where some, where some, uh, some British soldiers killed some Americans. And they were tried by the colonists for killing the Americans. Right after that, the king transferred the authority to try British troops into London, and you had to go to, to England to try them. 
Today, a federal agent is immune from any prosecution. Does that sound reminiscent of something? Ruby Ridge, Waco, Texas. Okay. They take Watch. them out of state court. Right. Whatever, whatever state the crime's committed in, mm -hmm. the federals take that agent, get him out of state court. Exactly. Get him in the federal. You cannot try a federal agent in a state court. This is where this is why this is not constitutional. The British did the same thing, and our ancestors took up muskets to stop it. What's going on in Nevada right now? I hope you know about what's going on out yeah. there. Yeah. And there's more of it getting ready to go in Texas that you haven't heard about yet. But you're getting ready to. They're getting ready to take thousands of acres down there. Getting ready to. In southern Missouri, they got stuff going on down there, too. There's no end to what's going to stop this. I'm just about out of time, folks, so i got to hurry here. Obama. He said if he doesn't get what he wants, he says, I have a pen and an executive order. There's not one thing in there, ladies and gentlemen, that gives him the authority to do that. That's right. There's no such thing as an executive order. That's, right. That's, right. That's the reason I left the military. I told my commander I'm not going to obey an undocumented president. Right. And I left. I took two years early retirement because I won't do it. This next, this next election, <coughs> folks, 2014 is not, not so much important, but the one in 2016, you had better choose right. In my opinion, there, will never, there won't be one after that because of what I'm telling you about that right there. It has started. The United States is about to have an economic collapse. And I'll get in that at the end of this if I can, if I have, if I have sufficient time. Uh, You've got about 25 minutes. 25 minutes. <laughs> there's, there's, there's something called a honey trap. A honey trap is something where you throw the bait out there and it looks so enticing, you take it, because you just got to have it, you know, but it will kill you. It's like the praying mantis, the female praying mantis, and the mantis, the male, when they get through doing their business, she bites his head off. Don't get no, don't get no idea, please. <laughs> yeah, she picked it, she got it. <laughs> uh, don't do that. Um, right now in the United States, most chiefs of police and sheriffs and lieutenants and above will go to the FBI Academy. When they go to the I when they go to the FBI Academy, they come back brainwashed for some reason. Now I know the St. Louis County Police has that policy. I do not know about the rest of them, but I know just about every sheriff will go to the FBI Academy. Okay, I don't know that all chiefs go, but I do know they do. A lot of them do go. And there is, is Are you a beginning talking of about elected end. sheriffs. Pardon? Elected sheriffs? Yeah, all of them do. All of them do, just about. Um, I'm not going to have time to go into this, I don't think, no matter what I want to do. So I'm just going to briefly hit this. There's something called, uh, let me get out of this real quick. I, 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 I do want to show you a meeting between uh, uh, Colonel North and Jack Brooks. Saw, you saw the list of the countries they're going to take down? No. This is, a, this is an exchange when I was in Nicaragua. You're not. You're not. Sorry about that. If I had my wife over doing this, I would have this problem.
Jean Frieda, North, and George Bush began to turn FEMA into an instrument of domestic anti-terrorism. We're dealing with a group of people in the Reagan administration who equated political dissent with treason, and who cannot differentiate between emergency procedures, which I think everyone agrees are necessary, and suppressing political dissent. And with North and Poindexter and Casey, you had a group of people who saw Americans who disagree with them as the enemy. Colonel North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman, I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area. So may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? That's Senator Inouye of Hawaii. Because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan um, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of an emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in which he had worked. I believe yeah, was. I most, most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, I'm certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. And tragically, the only member who got close was Jack Brooks, and he was stopped by the chairman. He was immediately out the door, and this is about the last thing I'm going to have time for. This is Rex 84. This goes along with something you may want to write down called Operation Garden Plot. This is Rex 84. You can read it yourself. It goes right along. This is not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a joke. We, I personally, and many people that I work with, very, very, very close people that I know, expect an imminent collapse of, this, of the United States imminent. I don't know when it will come, but it's going to come. It will come. It may be one major event. It may be a series of events, but it's going to happen. Every day that you tarry, if you are a Christian, every day that you wake up and you're on the side of your bed, if you're doing like me, you're scratching. Every time a foot hits the ground, all of hell should shake. When that other foot comes down, the world should tremble from a Christian waking up. You need to be out there doing something. And I don't care whether you're a Christian or not. I personally believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I'm also a killer. I've killed a lot. And if I need to, I'll kill a whole bunch more. If you, want to, if you don't want to get killed, don't show up in front of me. It's that simple. I have no qualms with it. God did not raise me to be a coward. No questions, not now. There comes a time when you got to man up. They're going to take your kids from you and put them in indoctrination camps. They're going to do it. It's going to happen. And there's nothing you're going to do to stop it because we've waited too long. I see a lot of gray-haired people in here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a 50-year fight. All of us are not going to survive it. Dan Page won't. So what you do now is for your children. has nothing to do with you. You've got to get the me out of the way. You've got to get in the fight to be in the fight. This 2016 election is extremely important. I have not voted for a Republican in 35 years. I, and I will not do it again. That's just me. I vote for the individual. You've got to get in the fight, ladies and gentlemen, at the state level. You've got to get your head out of the game at the federal level. It's too late. You've got to get in at the state, at the county. You've got to get involved with, with the school boards. There's something I call justification. You're not justified in divorcing your wife until you've had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her to see what the issues are. If she's mad about you, something that she's giving you the stuck-up nose, what's wrong? You're not justified in slapping her upside her head or you until you talk it out. Of course, you're never justified in slapping anybody anyway. You're not justified in filing for bankruptcy until you've attempted to pay all your bills off. 
The reason I'm telling you this, you're not justified going to the bullet box right off the bat. There's a lot of things we can do to stop this. God is all powerful. If you get right with him, he can make things happen for you. If you don't, you will go to the bullet box. And I only know maybe one or two people in here that seen combat. You don't want to see it. You don't want, you do not want my kind of memories. You don't. I, I'm just telling you. You don't know what it's like to see a flood of humanity. Floods of them. For those of you who have diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, kidney disease, you're dead. Your maximum effective lifespan is 24 hours by the time this thing hits. That's all you got. And this is going to happen. Operation Garden Plot goes and talks a, lot, talks a lot about the continuity of government. The continuity of government is a concept where those in power are going to protect themselves against you. And every time you do something they don't like, they become more oppressive. When you find out they become more oppressive, you do something. It keeps ratcheting up. We're all being funneled. I want to talk to you real quickly about the last 60 hours of a nation, and then I'm done. Okay? And I'm going to do this from memory because I, I don't have time to go into it. We've all had people that have died, and we've watched them maybe linger with cancer or heart disease or something, and we say to ourselves, they're getting close. Is that, is that pretty right? Yep. The last 60 hours of a nation has the same thing. I was the very first soldier. You can look at that. I was the very first ones into Afghanistan when the war started. I was already there. And I will tell you about what I know about 9-11. I told you I would. Colonel Kappel, a full bird colonel, commander of SOC Europe, that's Special Forces Command Europe, flew into Bosnia. And he assembled all of the SF guys under one up in the greenhouse. That will be in that building over there. He assembled us all in there. And this was in 1999. This was August the 1st, if I remember correctly. He says, gentlemen, no men, sorry. There's about to be an attack upon the United States. And he put on a presentation like I'm putting on you. And he put up on the screen all the people that were involved, going to be involved in it. They're, they were already there. 19 of them were from Saudi Arabia. Only one of them was from somewhere else. But we attacked Afghanistan. Hmm. That, sounds, that sounds logical to me. Yeah. Saudi Arabia sent them in, go blow up, go up, blow up Afghanistan. And he says, after that happens, the United States will be forever changed. And this man was highly respected. With that in mind, he went down to Charlie Ramp. That would be the place to go home on. He flew home and retired. He said, I'm not going to be part of what's, what America is going to turn into. 30 days later, you know what happened. I was in, I was in uh, me and my team flew into Afghanistan. We started calling in B-52 airstrikes on Tora Bora Mountains. And you know the rest of it. I've been over there five times. There were no weapons of mass destruction. Did not exist. The federal government's weapon, the definition of a weapon of mass destruction is a 50 caliber machine gun. I, I got them at home. Sorry, this is what it is. Where are they at? 14 years later, there's no weapons of mass destruction. Syria don't have them. Nobody has them. We got satellites in the sky. Nobody tracked them. They don't exist. So why did we go? That's the big question. In Saddam, in Saddam Hussein's trial in The Hague, it was proven he had nothing to do with the World Trade Towers. Germany told Bush. They warned him of it. And it did not come from Saddam Hussein, but yet we attacked Afghanistan for three months and we immediately went into Iraq. Why? There's no weapons of mass destruction. That man was hung. But you know what he said that really, 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 really interested me? He says, you know, I've done a lot of things. I've killed a lot of people. But he says, I've never murdered 50 million of my own people. Who do you think he was talking to? Us. So there was no weapons of mass destruction didn't happen. He was clear by our own State Department of having anything to do with 9-11. So why did we go? World government, folks. Yep. Anybody that resisted is dead, including you. I know there's a big target on my back. I know that. I still carry a secret clearance. I just, left, I just left Fort Littlewood, and I am totally done. I'd like to show you some more, but I'm out of time. I went down there three days ago, because I get briefed every six months. I still do. And I talked to my, to my companion, CSM. He says, Dan, 
we're bringing in a thousand Spetsnaz a week. And that's what those guys are right here, Spetsnaz. I, I did time with them. He says, we're bringing in a thousand a week. He said, this thing between the U.S. and Ukraine is a ruse. He said, of course, you know that. I said, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. It may be that international event that we're waiting on. He said, it's all, he said there's 18,000 of them in Fort Leonardwood right now. And there is. They're all over the place. Fort Carson, Colorado has 25,000. Fort Polk, Louisiana has, I think, 1,400. They will kill you. They will kill you. And now let me give you the last thing I want to tell you when a nation crumbles. You're going to start to see more. The news media is going to start banging on something. Could be Ukraine, could be, we don't know. That's how psychological warfare works. They talk about this, and this is happening over here. It's called a distraction. Incidentally, if you want anything that I've got, I've got a list here. We can do this three ways. You can write down your name, phone number, and address. I can mail it to you. I can send it to you in digitals. Or you can get with Mrs. Butler or Doc and, and give them their name and address. Could you pass that around? And then, I, and, then, and then I will burn in copies of everything I got that I don't have time to go into. So number one is there, 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 there's, going to be, there's going to be an emphasis upon international events. The news media is going to pound it, pound it, pound it. The second thing is you're going to start to see a group or a person guilty of racism or something along those lines. They're going to start pounding on that. They want your attention over here. The third thing you're going to start to see is people being arrested for, for domestic terrorism. The fourth thing you're going to see, and this is what this is what I got to talk to the ladies about, it's what I call ancient hate, ancient madness, ancient revenge. When these things start to happen, people are going to start rioting. The EBT cards are going to shut down. Can you imagine what's going to happen in North St. Louis and St. Louis County? What's when the EBT cards go down? When the ATM machines don't work? Walmart's in Illinois already, and other places had some problems with that already. Think about that, what's going to happen. When, when, those, when the inner cities start to ignite, people are going to start killing people they don't like. And I'm going to warn the ladies on something. And this always gets me in trouble, but I've got to tell you. This domestic violence stuff, every time a man turns around and gets jammed up by his wife on this, you are heading for troubles, ladies. A man can be arrested now for domestic property damage, domestic peace disturbance, domestic destruction of property, so forth and so forth. And so how can you do that in your own house? You, can't, you can be arrested for domestic trespassing. I've seen people with lines down the middle of the house. Stupid. If you don't like each other that much, just kill each other and get it over with. Problem solved. <coughs> get it done. Don't, don't be wasting cops' time. Just shoot each other and get it over with. Right? That's the way I feel about it. Don't tell the colonel that. <laughs> <laughs> Major, is this going to go nuclear? Full Just hold change? on. Hold on. No questions right now. Right. So that's, that's the fourth thing that's going to happen. Okay? Contractors are going to come in. They'd be me. People like me, but on the other side. They're going to kill you. You're going to start seeing people, that person sitting next to you, a few years from now will not be sitting there because they're going to be gone. Because somebody like me is going to come in and kill you. For all you wannabes out here who think you're the baddest thing in the world, I got news for you. You're going to meet bad. Not that bad can't be killed, but when you're talking with somebody who does this 24-7 every day of their life, they get pretty good at it. Right. Not somebody who just does it every now and then. I've seen grown men go out and buy all the latest widgets. I've, I've seen guys in the Army do this. You can always tell the rookie. He's got the latest crap on. And the minute the first round, choo, stage left. Stick to the basics. You don't need the most expensive gun. Don't need all that. You just need the one that you'll train with, one that works, and one that, one that you'll use. That's all you need. The last thing comes in is when the main force comes in, and it's all over with. And all this will happen in less than 60, 60, 60 days or 60 hours, the last 60 hours, because that's what we did in Iraq. We brought everybody in, we assembled it, and then we hit it. Can you imagine what those people thought when they started seeing this massive army assembled around it? Can you imagine the fear in those people's eyes? We used to look down there in telescopes at, at those people's face. You could see the, the fear. We killed 32,000 people in one night. When the B-52s came in and the A-10 Warhawks came in, 32,000 people died in one night. Think about it. And incidentally, the, the states that are going to be attacked are those states passing laws restricting federal government. The 21 states that, that have filed to succeed from the union, that's the targets. That's where they're coming. 
if you are deducting tithes <coughs> from your, if you are if you are deducting your tithes from your tax, they're coming to your house because that means you're a religious person. Yeah. The definition of a terrorist is a white male, one who believes in Jesus Christ, one who believes in the Second Amendment, one who believes in a third party. That is the definition of a terrorist. I'm going to stop. I thank you all. I can't go on no more. I appreciate it. I'll open it up for questions. I know Doc says we're on a short lease here, so it's up to you after that. Yes, sir. If you capture one of these uh, Russian special forces, do they have tattoos on their body? I don't sir, know. they can have a tattoo on their butt. I don't know. No, but I'm saying. I don't know. Okay. I, I can't answer your question. I don't know. Is this going to go nuclear, chemical, or biological full blown? It probably. Time? Battlefield nuclear weapons are very small. They only are designed to kill about 10 square miles. So, so it ain't going to be like Cold War thermonuclear winter? I, I have no idea. I don't know. Okay. I can't answer your question. I don't know. Yes. Something I asked you on the phone was um, how do we get police, fire, and paramedics involved with Oath Keepers and to help us to help the people in our communities or something like that. Well, to tell you the truth, I didn't know that this was going to be an Oath Keepers. I thought this was just a church meeting. To tell you the truth, I don't know. Oath Keepers among law enforcement, I don't know what their opinion is on them, so I can't say. Yeah. But what I would do, I would simply get, uh, I would go down to the police department and I, I would probably uh, go to the police academy, the civilian academy. Yeah. And you, how you present yourself, if you come off with somebody really odd to police, policemen are very cynical. I know I am. I don't trust nobody, and I hate everybody. So I hate y'all, too. I hate everybody. I'm, I mean, I'm into diversity. I kill everybody. I don't care. Uh, but, but I would go down to the police department, get to know them, and just let yourselves be known that you're not some extremist organization because the news media has you where they want. So you have to, you have to combat that. There's something called 801020 or 973. Uh, it's it's the it's what I call the 97 percenters are going to do whatever the federal government wants. Right. Three percent will not. <clears throat> On the other hand, you got the 80 percent who will, the 20 percent who don't care one way or the other, and the 10 percent will resist. So that's. So you have to present yourself to them on an individual basis rather than as a group, I think. Mm -hmm. And just explain your views. Keep it simple. Don't get way out there theoretical and stuff. That talk, talk about those things that you know. And stick just stick to the issues, I think. Next question. Any, any more? Yeah. Jim. Sergeant Major, have you seen anything as far as a memorandum come down through the Army that makes uh, uh, Tea Party members or Christians that, that share their view within the military subjects support Yes, that's true. The Army has a policy now. It's called proselytizing. If you are a Christian, you, can, you, cannot, hang, you cannot mention Jesus anywhere in the barracks, on, on military property, have a Bible displayed or anything like that. And that's true. Them, them down oh, yes, that's true, yes. People are being court-martialed and separated for that. That's true. Is it possible just to defund this by simply not paying taxes? No, I, you, that's another issue I'm not going to get into. It's justified in paying taxes. Jesus says... He, he, pulled, he pulled a coin out of Fisher's mouth and said, pay up, shut up. That's my definition. Of it. Yeah, you, taxes are legitimate. There's nothing wrong with paying taxes. That's just the way that it is. So what happens because good men like you are all retiring from the military, so what kind of military do you have left then? Sodomites and females. <laughs> that are willing to do whatever they can. End of statement. Should we stand our ground or should we run? You know, what should we do? Should you know, I can't tell you what to do. I will tell you, I got a big bullseye on my back because I had, and I forgot to do this. I do not represent the St. Louis County Police Department. I do not speak for them. This is all my opinion. I do not speak for the U.S. military, the federal government, or the president. I forgot to tell you this because I have to get permission from the Army to do this. I'm theirs. They own me. So uh, I can't tell you what to do in that. Here's what I believe. The scriptures teach us, and this is the best example I can give, every knee is going to take a bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And you got to face him, so you do what you think he would be proud of. Sir? We've seen a huge purge of the leadership of the military. Yes. And there's a lot of people, including me, wondering when this stuff hits the fan, there's going to be a whole lot of guys that stand down. Uh, in the military and in the police force, uh, what kind of percentage do you kind of think? Well, that's going to be real difficult. I would say that they would have 90% going to come and kill you because there is a purge that you cannot believe in the military right now. The Marine, the, the Marine Corps, whether you like it or not, I don't care what branch of military you come from, is the Guardians of America. They are, and this, I really hate to say this, but i got to say it, they are the finest fighting force the world's ever known. They really are. They're good. 
if you want to go that way, you tell the Marine, well, he's got it. But they are being feminized. Yeah. And, and I'm not picking on women, okay? But, but they are being destroyed because of females who are not happy with being women. Yeah. And ladies, I'm going to tell you right now, you better enjoy your femininity. Yeah. Because the day is going to come when you're just going to want to set and put smelly good on and just relax. It's not going to happen. So the, the, I can't answer that, but there was, uh, I was going to show it to you, but I do not have time, called the 29 Palm Survey, and they were asked by the United Nations Combat Survey team, because I took it too, are you willing, should, this was done under Bush, by the way, well, now I've actually got the survey here, and Bush asked them, if I issue an executive order telling you to shoot those people who will not turn their firearms, are you willing to do it? At that time, 75% of the Marine Corps said no. Bush got, Bush was furious. So he started cleaning the Marine Corps out. He, for the first time in history, they had, uh, this is a couple years ago, the Marine Corps Commandant has always been an infantry soldier, always. But it's no longer that. Now they got a, a loghead in there, a logistics guy who don't know crap about combat. Right. And he's, he's been doing everything Obama tells him to do. The, so the good Marines are being pushed. And the Marines are not a large force anyway. I think they're about 80, 90,000. 170? Well, they've gone up then. But they're not that big, but they are the finest fighting force. So if something ain't broke, why would you want to change it? Now, we got our first female Green Beret, our first female Ranger. Ladies, you're going down the wrong road on this because I used to carry a 90-pound backpack in there. That's all gone. Sir, you had a question. Well, I was going to ask you, earlier in the uh, talk, you talked <clears throat> about the President being in charge of the Army and the Navy. Mm -hmm. but exclude the Marine Corps and the Air Force. Right. Why? Because they come under because they, they come under the, 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 the Marines come under the Department of the Navy. So there's no Posse Comitatus Act on them. They can do whatever they want and the Air Force did not exist. So they can do what they want. That said, the Patriot Act eliminated the Posse Comitatus. The the twenty twelve National Defense Authorization Act signed by Republicans for you Republicans in here twice. You can now be held incognito indefinitely. No lawyers, no handwritten mail, no Twitter, no Facebook. That's going to kill most people right there. Okay? No, no, no nothing. No family. You're not told. You're gone forever. Incidentally, there's a, there's a movie out with Mr. Stallone and somebody. I forgot who the other guy is. Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's called Escape. You must have, you're reading my thoughts. Yes. <laughs> it's called Escape. That boat exists. It's real. Ooh. That boat does exist. I'm telling you for a fact. I know it did. I'm just telling you, I know it for a fact. It exists. It's real. Sir. It's pondered and wondered. The military isn't supposed to be used internally in the United States, but it looks like the police forces have been militarized and desensitized against being deployed against the United States. Is that? An accurate assessment. Yeah, that's inaccurate because the military can now be used. That's what I just said. There is no such thing as posse comitatus. It doesn't exist. The military can and will be used in the United States. But who you better watch for is the is the contractors. Folks, I'm going to have to end it. My time is out. Thank you. I would like to present Sergeant Major Dan Page with one of our oath people. Thank you. Thank you very much.